What is going on guys? Grave here. Yesterday, September the 7th, we received a pretty substantial update for PS5. If you have not turned on your PlayStation 5 in the last couple days, this update was a little over a gig. Now this was the update that a lot of people were looking forward to. I made a video about this a few months ago when it was in its beta phase. And there's a lot of things that were added to this update that a lot of PlayStation 5 fans were looking forward to. I will link all this information down in the description if you would like to read over it for yourself. One of the big features that they added was the ability to kind of customize your game library into uh, folders. So in the game library, you can now create custom game lists to better organize your games. All you have to do is go to your game library, uh, go to your collections tab, select games to add to your game list, and then decide what you want to name it. Hopefully in the future, they're going to add this ability kind of to the main home screen as well, like we had on PS4, where you could kind of organize your games or organize everything on that main screen to kind of be in select folders to kind of get rid of some of that clutter. Because all of you know, if you have a PS5, uh, that list of, of items on your main screen is getting pretty big now if you have several games. And of course, you know, you have the Explorer, the, you know, uh, store, all that kind of stuff. So hopefully that will be added in later down the road. But the option to do this in the game library is also a very good thing. So like I said, all you have to do is go to your collections tab and select the games you want to add to that game list. They also added some new things within the help feature. Uh, the game help now informs you when there's help available on both PS5 and mobile. So if you want this turned on, all you have to do is just kind of go into the settings, the notifications, to game help on the PlayStation app, select mobile, uh, mobile via the PlayStation app. Then you can adjust whether you want that setting turned on on PS5 or not. So that way, if there's some help available, the PlayStation console will notify you. One of the biggest things that were added in with this update was 1440p HDMI video output. That is now supported. This is something that a lot of PS5 fans were asking for. And before you can actually turn it on, you have to run a test to see if your HDMI device supports 1440p output. So you go into your settings, screen and video, video output, and test 1440p. If it works, of course, it will allow you to turn it on. If your device is not supported, it will uh, you know, kind of inform you of that as well. Also, they made some changes to the game base. You can now request party members to share screen to kind of watch their gameplay. All you have to do is go to the voice chat card, select the party member you want to send the request to, and then request uh, to share that screen. When you join a party and a party member is playing a game you can, uh, you can join, you will now receive a notification. Also, when you receive a message, you can now view the sender's profile by selecting the message and pressing, of course, that three line button, which of course kind of used to, used to be what the start button was, but the button with three lines on the right side of the PlayStation controller, uh, you know, kind of in the center there by the touchpad, you can select that and you can actually see that uh, profile of that player. Uh, we've updated also the following friend request changes. You can accept a friend request in the receive list. You can now view your friend's profile in the accepted request and in the game based card, you can now send stickers and voice messages to your groups. Also, they've made some changes to the game hubs. In progress activities can now be shown promptly at the top of the game hub to make it easy and fast as possible to get back to where you left off. If the game help is available for an activity, the view hints button will appear. And also, uh, in the video base on your recent gameplay kind of screen section, you will see labels for why the videos are, or kind of why and what videos are recommended for you, such as fast play, high score, or top performance. Also, while using the web browser, you can now select between zoom type functions. They also reorganized the 3D audio settings. Now, under 3D audio for your uh, 3D audio or TV speakers and 3D audio for your headphones in settings and sound, you can now list and compare the difference between 3D and stereo, uh, stereo audio on the same screen. Also, voice command now supports searching for content in YouTube using voice. From anywhere on the PS5 during gameplay, you can say, hey, PlayStation, search for keyword like YouTube. The YouTube app will then open. It is now easier to, to use your keyboard or uh, on your PC or Mac when using the PS remote play. We've removed the text entry box so you can use your keyboard to type directly onto your PS5 or PS4. In addition to typing, you can also use the keyboard to control games that support it. And custom button assignments uh, now available in the passcode input screen. And they also have updated the DualSense wireless controller support software to improve stability. So as soon as you turn on that PlayStation, if you had it in rest mode, the update should be out. But as soon as I turn mine on, 
I had to update my DualSense wireless controller as well. That's pretty much kind of the high points of this update. It was a pretty big one, some really good things this time instead of just improving stability. We had actually a lot of changes. Leave me a comment with your thoughts. Let me know what you would like to maybe see in some future PS5 updates. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. I'll catch you all next time. Peace.